Hey everyone, it's Maggie Vaught here from um, after a long weekend at PAX and um, it's kind of neat. So today is the 1st of September and I wanted to go back and take a look at uh, the games I played this month and see what strikes me, you know, if anything comes up. And what did strike me is the incredible amount of games I played this month. There was 91 plays and that's only the plays I remember to record and it's very, very likely that that number is actually low, which is kind of scary to think about. Um, so if you think about it, this month has been this beautiful weekends and the Sasquatch game day and um, a little con out here in Seattle and just recently PAX weekend. So I had lots and lots of opportunities to play both with friends and strangers and I had a really good time. Uh, as far as things I was surprised by, I got in a play of, finally, of Pictomania, which is Vlada Shavadal's drawing game. It's kind of a simultaneous, everyone's drawing uh, at the same time a series of cards that are soft to one side. And you know that everyone has to have a unique number and a unique card um, of the seven choices possible. So you get points if you finish guessing first, and you also get points if you're the first to guess each person's thing correctly. So you put your guesses out and wherever you are in the stack determines how many points you get. Um, really interesting, doesn't necessarily mean you have to draw, but you do have to get kind of creative on how you clue people into things. Um, so that was probably my most surprising one that I enjoyed. Um, the two I have for next month that I'd very much like to get some more plays of and get a little more strategy on. Uh, first is Yunnan, which is an Argentum Verlog game about tea trading that I talked a little bit about on a vlog before, but unfortunately I've still only played once, so I don't have much of an in-depth take on it. And the second one is Steamworks from Tasty Menstrual Games. Um, now Steamworks, I talked a bit about, I did a Sasquatch game day and we played a five player game and we never ended up finishing it. And honestly I was, I was thinking, well maybe I only want to play this with three players. And after I posted my initial vlog, the, the creator, Alex Churchill, got on to uh, BGG on the comments and said, well one thing that we did kind of design into the game was kind of the busking salesmanship part of the game where if I want if I want you to use my machine, I have to kind of tell you what it offers. And so with the five player experience, I think that's going to be more common than with the three player where you might be able to see everyone's machines a little easier. So in September, I definitely want to get Steamworks and Union to the table. Um, the ones that I played and not sure on, the, the one that strikes out to me is Epic Card Game. Uh, it's new, it's from the same guys that did uh, Star Realms, and I played the sealed format, which means that you shuffle a deck and deal 30 cards randomly, and it feels a little like if you did that with magic cards, where this one gets pumped by humans, but maybe I don't have other humans in the deck, and there's only 30 cards, and you kind of recycle them. It's got some neat points to it, but I think I'm going to prefer it in a draft format, so I, I look forward to trying it in a different way. Okay, so that's the stuff I don't have much to talk about. <laughs> Already three minutes in. Um, the stuff I got to play quite a bit of and still enjoying and would like to talk more about um, first and foremost is Koi Pond from Daniel Sillies. So I had been reminded of Koi Pond when a new friend came into town, Annette, and her uh, boyfriend Mitch, and we played it. And going from the two player one time game that I played over Christmas to a three player experience of Koi Pond uh, made a very marked difference. This game is not meant for two players. Um, playing this at three and four players as I did all PAX weekend is really cool and special and important and all the cards care about all the other cards on the table and everything kind of has a relationship and it's a really neat interconnected light card game. So uh, very very interesting stuff in the art and blow you away. It's a gorgeous game. Um, second, we're still on that Norrin Burke kick. I know that White Goblin Games is searching for you know, distribution partners if they ever want to do a reprint, so if you happen to know anyone in publishing, this is the time to get a hold of them. Uh, still an excellent game. I have not had any bad games of it. still haven't broken it. Um, the trackable hidden money still isn't an issue, so cute and adorable and wonderful. Hopefully someone, someone out there cares. 
one game we did get to play a lot of was uh, Shipyard from Sadamiyar Suki Sushi. Um, he did Last Will previously, and Shipyard is his really interesting rondel rondel game. So the action selection is really cool. You kind of you go around the table taking actions, and if you take an action toward the end of the rondel, you get extra gold. If you take it toward the front, it's usually going to be a better action. But you have access to every action except for the one you took last round. And then each round you can also buy an action for gold inside the game. And so um, you really have a lot of choices. And what you're trying to do is buy ship parts and uh, people and cranes and cannons and then send them up a canal. And each part of that takes a different part of the rondelle and different parts of the actions. So you are planning and trying to get to these objective cards and narrowing down which objective cards you're keeping and it's got so many moving parts and so much going on that it's just really fascinating. The decision processes in that game make a three, three hour game go by like no time. Um, I still still love Traders of Osaka for a very lightweight card game. It's got a lot of decisions, a lot of take that in a very hidden way. It's not where you, you know, shove it in their face. It's just that you deny people so much in that game. It's heavy denial. And it's, it's very fun and beautiful and easy to show lots of different types of gamers. So really interesting stuff. And the last one that I got to kind of rediscover this month that I want to do a longer video on is Macau. And Macau is an older Suffenfeld game that I unfortunately had kind of a negative experience with the, the first few times I played and have had really bad games of it before. But played with the right players, Macau is absolutely fun and fascinating. Uh, you have to plan several turns ahead a lot of the time and you're relying on a little bit of luck and a little bit of strategy and you can really screw yourself over by taking a couple of risks which I always seem to do and has paid off a couple times but you know dice are dice and if they don't come up in your favor you just can't do anything about it. Um, really interesting use of that. It's got a little bit of area control, a little bit of racing, it's got that feld track in the middle which is always cool and the cubes are tiny and unfortunately it would be horrible if it was printed now because it's so not good for colorblind people so all we can do is hope 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 that someday someone takes that game back redoes the art just a little bit which I'm guessing is why it doesn't get reprinted and puts it back out into the world because it's so so good uh, especially if we don't get any more felds this year um, I know that there is a game based on the game Aquasphere, but I know that it's not Stop and Foul, which is probably the silliest thing I've heard in a while. A game based on Aquasphere. But it's already a game. <laughs> um, but that's just my month of August uh, was very, very interesting. And then the other half of August was this vlogging experiment. So vlogist, if you will, was my attempt to vlog every day in August. And what ended up happening is that, yes, I filmed every day in August, but those projects were pretty varied, so only about half of them ended up on YouTube as vlogs. Um, the other halves were blenders and private things that went to other people and playtest feedback, and um, I ended up playtesting two and a half games. I'm still working on one more um, in the month of August, and those all take time and effort and thought, and it takes about as much time as a full length video if I want to get really in depth about stuff. So I did film every day and that was really fascinating. Uh, what I want to do going forward is two single game videos a week and then a couple of vlogs whenever I've got something to say or something cool or a couple minutes in the morning. Uh, I can I can show you right now I never have run out of things to talk about so that's not really my issue is just trying to get some time to relax, have a quiet house, and speak enough takes to actually get my points across the way I'd like to. So um, I'd much rather do that as well as I can than as often as I can. Um, but it's been really fun and you guys have all been really supportive and wonderful and it's been really cool. The one biggest thing about Vlogus that's really nice is that so many of you comment on the videos and start conversations and uh, a lot of my a lot of my online life is enhanced by you guys 
interacting with what I'm talking about and uh, participating and so that's one really really cool thing and I've had some of you here with me on the channel for years now and it's it's cool how far we've come you know <laughs> but uh, next big project will be uh, Geek Girl Con at the beginning of October of which I'm staff I will be running the gaming floor here in Seattle and then right after that we'll be gearing up toward uh, Extra Life, which is that 24-hour gaming marathon. We'll be streaming with my company, Mox Boarding House, and we'll hopefully have a few of my friends joining us. There's going to be a bigger crew and only one gaming table on the stream, so when we're not on the stream, I would imagine we'll be off periscoping and that kind of thing. Um, we'll be doing a full video for that and asking for your links and shares and generosity when we're ready to do that. <laughs> um, that's all for me for now, and it's really good to get a few moments to breathe and talk to you guys, and I'll see you guys next time.